What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we are going to go deep dive. We're going to analyze the combat of the new Sparking Zero because why not? We have to. This is just so awesome and there's a lot of interesting stuff here, especially when comparing this with the Budokai Tenkaichi 3 or 4 for that matter. So this is an old, a bit of an old gameplay and I'm just going to compare some of the stuff we see in this uh, particular gameplay and the stuff we're going to see in the actual new game, right? So first and foremost let's look at some of the mechanics in terms of combat so in terms of combat itself as you can see here just in the beginning actually you see something quite nice and it's the fact that the cutscenes transition to the combat is straight away at the same time as you can see here I mean this could be like this is just like the this was like a small cutscene I guess at the start of the fight you see this short animation which is pretty cool right uh, then when it transitions to this, you'll see the following. So when this combat starts, when the move starts, as you can see here, Goku's movements and the camera actually tilts a bit, which is pretty awesome. And that kind of gives a more like impression of speed, a speed and constant power, right? Now, in terms of the evasions, this is a good one here. I mean, we're going to see more of the evasions later on, but uh, the evasions or the images that you like, kind of like evade and use like a mirror image. And dodge it just the right second all right uh, in the actual previous game it was a bit more different but in this one it looks to give you just just slightly a bit more time just to focus on giving that instant reaction now in terms of the beams as you can see here the beams are very powerful at the same time you can again dodge them quite nicely so there's actually i believe quite a small quite a decent window for dodging the beams and at the same time, when you dodge a beam, you actually have the chance to counter yourself. Now, a new change, which this was not in the previous Budokai Tenkaichi, is that here, even if you actually do a beam and then the person dodges, you can still have a chance to deflect the beam if you time it right, as you can see here. Now, this is really cool because sometimes it was quite annoying because you would just literally like dodge, beam, dodge, beam, and your opponent could not defend themselves against that particular beam. Now, that's not the case anymore. So, just by dodging and counter-attacking with your beam, it's not a guaranteed success because your opponent can actually deflect the beam, as you can see here, and actually defend themselves. I think that's a really good addition because that's just going to make the gameplay so much more smarter and kind of make it more dynamic, as in you can launch a lot of beams because you have the ability to actually deflect it when you actually need it, right? Now, transformations uh, are pretty damn awesome, as you can see here, the transformations, each character has slightly different, unique transformations, so as you can see here, the animations of these are really cool, and it just shows, you know, the character's personality, which is really awesome, to be honest. The attacks... Now, this is the part here which is really cool because the beam struggles are back and the beam struggles are going to be very important. As you can see here, when they connect, it's going to cause that big struggle, that big explosion. Now, moving on to the actual dodges or evasions, this is where we see something quite awesome. We're going to compare it with the uh, other video for the Budokai Tenkaichi 3. So as you can see here, the evasions are actually slightly slower, just a bit slower, so it gives you just a bit more time of reaction. Going back to the previous video, this is the current one. As you can see here, the evasions are actually quite hard to pull. I mean, as in, they're a bit harder because they're much faster, so you have to kind of, you know, time it very, very, very well. Whereas in the pre in this one, actually, from my point of view, this, this, is why, this is my impression right now. It actually allows people to be more strategic because, as you can see here, you have just a bit more time to actually dodge. As you can see here, you just have that extra couple milliseconds, very short uh, difference, but you have just a bit more of an uh, advantage when dodging because you can kind of have a bit more time just it just it's just very minimal it's very small that window this additional window but i can definitely tell that it's there right so it's pretty cool uh now at the end of it of course we have the special grappling attack so this is the typical grappling attack as you can see here they are back so the combat will have grapplings but they are much more brutal they're much more powerful and maybe they're even going to tie into combos potentially that's also another possibility uh, also, when they do the special attacks, as you can see here, so again, transformations are very different. This is, I guess, is Goku's one of his Dragon Rush attacks, most likely. 
And one thing we see here is that each character, as you can see here, when they do an attack, they have these particular cutscenes, the angles of the camera. So it's really cool because it actually showcases the fighter's abilities and also kind of gives it a bit more of an epicness flavor. If you have Jiren, super duper awesome here, <laughs> he's the boss, man. He is the freaking boss. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of like the summary of the combat things we've seen so far. I mean, there's also like the environments. Obviously, they're very highly destructive. So they've already said that before that the environments are very destructible in real time, which means that most likely the environment will not repair itself as we have seen it in previous games. In other games, the building will be destroyed, but the actual environment and everything will kind of regenerate and the grass would regenerate. So it would be really like a bit annoying because you don't really see the trail of destruction. But in this one, I think is actually going to keep the buildings and everything like destroyed and the actual environment is going to stay destroyed and like maybe holes in the ground. So with Unreal Engine 5, there's a lot more possibilities in terms of actually doing that, which is really awesome. And I quite like the fact that when you do your attack again, you can actually see what's going on in the, in the against your enemy. So as you can see here, when you do your attack, you can still see some of the stuff, so it's not doesn't blind the entire screen, which is really cool. And you can even see it and kind of defend against it, which is really awesome. So it kind of gives you that opportunity to just you know deflect it in the right time. So again, the attacks are much more clean. The beam attacks have like a more cleanse to it, which kind of gives you the as the player the ability to defend yourself better when in a pinch, which is really awesome. So that's it guys, kind of the summary of this combat analysis. Now we're going to do more analysis once we get our hands on the next uh, gameplay. I'm pretty sure the next gameplay is going to be at some point in the Dragon Ball Battle Hour. I just I just love this, so check this out, right? So this is the best part here because when you do your attack, of course, different characters are gonna have different attacks, but when Vegeta does the golly gun, one thing I quite like a lot is that you can clearly see like what's happening like over there, over here. And even like the beam like kind of curves a bit, as you can see here, it's actually curving a bit, which is pretty interesting. So the beam actually tracks just ever so slightly the character. I mean, this is my impression it gives to me. I mean, let's just go back for a second and just check that out again one more time. So you have here the beam. So yeah, it just, it just kind of curves just a bit, like just a bit, which is really cool because it kind of tracks the position of the enemy. Uh, up to like a couple of meters which is really awesome so you can see here so look at that see that like that curve and boom and then it comes this way and it's just just really awesome now you can see here the illumination is really awesome because it kind of shows when the you know the, when the beam is coming you can then dodge it when it kind of reflects in the background so it kind of gives like a visual signal that okay this is when i should dodge it when there's lights around me right so it's a really good way to kind of defend yourself and uh, yeah that's it guys for for this video to be honest i'm quite excited because it's just freaking awesome the whole combat itself is just amazing and i truly believe that we've come a very far away from from this i mean just imagine like from the budokai tenkaichi 3 this is like the mod version by the way but anyway the mod version as you can see here like the movements and the combat was you know, if you look back now, they were very janky if you compare them to modern gaming, right? So just thinking about the fact that we are going to go away from the jankiness and just have full-on crazy hardcore combat. Guys, I just cannot believe this actually this is actually happening, which is just amazing, right? Now, one more thing I would really like the developers to do is like, especially like when you do the rush attacks, for example, like they have sometimes like quite a limited annoying range. So hopefully they fix this and maybe you can even defend yourself against the rush attacks because in in the, you know, the previous games to defend yourself, you have to guard, but maybe you can potentially counter them at the same time. So we'll see how that goes because there could be an option for countering the rush attacks and that would just be freaking awesome, right? Uh, so guys, that's it for uh, today's video. I hope you know, so, so see that. So you see when you do your beam attack, like the whole window just goes blank, just, just blinds you completely. And this is what I didn't really like before because it just it just blinds you the hell out of you, and you just can't see what's going on over there, right? So hopefully, when the new the new game when it comes out, there is not going to be the problem of like the light. The attack is too powerful, as you can see here. It's just too much. It's just, just way too much. Like you need to have a bit more like vision and then to see what's happening in front of you because otherwise you're gonna be in danger because you cannot see what your opponent is actually doing right which is 
a big, a big, a big difference. So, guys, that's it for today's video on the new gameplay for this one. To be honest, quite quite excited, quite hyped, guys. Cannot wait to get more gameplay. The next video, we're going to talk about the roaster because the roaster, guys, is going to be amazingly big. Cannot wait for that. And also, just to end this short video on a very positive note, there are some indications that the game is pretty much coming earlier than we expect. So there's discussions that the game may be coming like in you know, a very late 24 or early 25 because you can already pre-order it in GameStop in America, for example. That's a really good sign. I mentioned that in my previous video, but just to kind of reiterate here again, when you can pre-order a game already in different stores, that means that the game could be coming within less than 12 months. And that would coincidentally be around the month of October, November 2024. So, guys, that's it for today's video. Let's see if our wishes come true. And, of course, as always, see you later in the next videos. Bye.